This was indeed a very large weekend for the movie community. Not only did Alice in Wonderland enjoy the sixth largest opening of all time, despite the largest opening in the spring or March, then this weekend holds in store for us the 82nd Annual Academy Awards. So I had promised you guys to make more videos about the Oscars after I had done my original uh, reaction to the nominees, but I didn't really get a chance to, be, but I've been do on pretty much every website for like Movie Phone and IMBD and Box Office Mojo and Rotten Tomatoes, I've been doing predictions and stuff for the past month now, and you know, it. I do very slightly between who I want to win, who I think should win, but they match up pretty evenly this year on like last. This is a much more exciting year for the Oscars than last year after The Dark Knight got stubbed because there are 10 Best Picture nominees, and last year was just obvious after the bland Best Picture category, it was Slumdog Millionaire, there was nothing else just gonna jump in there. Um, uh, this year, there's huge heat between The Hurt Locker and Avatar, and some people are saying if they cancel each other out, Glorious Bastards could even win. Um, so let's just jump right into my final. I got this at my AMC Best Picture Showcase, in which I saw five movies nominated for Best Picture, and I watched like one or two last week. I didn't do all of them. But uh, yeah, it was really a lot of fun. So yeah, spent, I think I broke my record for movies seen in a theater in a single day. Um, yes, yeah, so they gave us like a free ballot, even though I had like 30 already, but I just had this out. Alright, so, uh, start off how they did with Best Actor. Uh, I'm just gonna read, no, I don't want to go through all the nominees, because I think you know them all, I'm just gonna say the winner. Jeff Bridges, Crazy Art, he does an amazing job. Runner up, I'd have to say Jeremy Renner, because he was just so awesome in The Hurt Locker. Supporting Actor, is there any other? Christoph Waltz! I mean, that's a bingo! You should totally do that. What do you win? That'd be awesome, right? I mean, th there's no competition here. Um, best Actress, you know, I personally would go with Carrie Mulligan, but it's going to be Sandra Bullock. Come on. And runner-up would probably be um, Meryl Streep anyway. So, even though they both did very good jobs, uh, yeah, Sandra Bullock, come on. Um, best Supporting Actress deserves to go to and will go to Monique for Precious. Come back to Best Picture. Best Director. Um... Very heated race, yes, yet again. Whatever winds up winning director, I think, will also go to Best Picture. So, it's between, obviously, James Cameron and Catherine Bigelow. Um, I step definitely think Catherine Bigelow. I think James Cameron's really being nominated for his visuals, less than the actual film he created. But uh, Catherine Bigelow just does such, such a great job with what she did here. Uh, best Foreign Film. This is another one between Un Profit and The White Ribbon. I like The White Ribbon slightly better, so I think that will win, too. Best Animated Film. Oh, come on! It's my favorite film of the year, and I definitely think it should win for the Pixar's through straight year in a row. All right, Art Direction. We have Avatar. Come on. Pandora was beautiful. Uh, cinematography. You know, at first I was going with Avatar, but it's mainly animated, so I don't know if, um... Academy will go for that. I'm going to say The Hurt Locker, because I think they did an amazing job. Um, costume design, The Young Victoria. Don't need to talk about that one much. Best documentary. I would personally have to go with Anvil, the story of Anvil, but a lot of people are saying that it wasn't eligible for this category or something, something. So out of the ones nominated, I even say Food, Inc. was my favorite, but I think The Cove will win. Um, best documentary short. I'm going to say The Last Truck Closing of GM Plant. Uh, you know, it's for the times, you know, it seems very relevant, so I think that it will take it. Film editing, I'll say The Hurt Locker. You know, Avatar, it was very awesome with the action, even though I very much did enjoy Coraline. All right, art direction. We have Avatar, come on. Pandora was beautiful. Uh, cinematography. You know, at first I was going with Avatar, but it's mainly animated, so I don't know if, um... Academy will go for that. I'm going to say The Hurt Locker, because I think they did an amazing job. Um, costume design, The Young Victoria. Don't need to talk about that one much. Best documentary, I would personally have to go with Anvil, the story of Anvil, but a lot of people are saying that it wasn't eligible for this category or something, something. So out of the ones nominated, I even say Food, Inc. was my favorite, but I think The Cove will win. Um, best documentary short, I'm going to say The Last Truck Closing of GM Plant. Uh, you know, it's for the times, you know, it seems very relevant, so I think that it will take it. Film editing, I'll say The Hurt Locker. You know, Avatar, it was very awesome with the action, but The Hurt Locker, it created those tents and just so 
Especially in the bomb diffusing scenes, obviously, it's just so tense and just pure, pure intensity in there. And I, that's one of the things that made it so much better was that film editing. Um, makeup, Star Trek, best original score. I don't, it, yet again, it depends on how much love the Academy is going to give Avatar, but I definitely think it's up. I don't think up really, I, even if it wasn't up, I'd say Sherlock Holmes. And I don't know what's been Glorious Bastards, because I know it had some non-original songs on there, but I, you know, I used that score, like, all throughout my Tom Shadow Bash videos, and I just love it. It's just really awesome. Um, yeah, so I'd say Up by Michael Giacchino. Best original song, the movie about music, Crazy Heart, The Weary Time. Best animated short, I'm gonna go with Logorama. Uh, best live action short, The Door. Uh, sound editing, yeah, I'm gonna stop that. Sound mixing, yeah, no, no, no. Avatar. Best visual effects. No, there's no competition there, Avatar, come on. Best adapted screenplay, up in the air. Uh, best original screenplay, Inglourious Bastards. It might go to the Hurt Locker because, you know, the whole best picture thing, but Inglourious Bastards, the dialogue, come on, guys. They were sitting at a table for 20 minutes and it's just so tense and you're so into it and so enjoyable. Last, but most importantly, best picture. Now I'm going to go through each one and kind of talk about how much, what I feel about it. Avatar. Now, I love this movie when it first came out, and I still think it is very good. It's not the greatest movie ever, like a lot of people are saying, but it, it's a good movie. It's not anything amazing, it's not terribly original, and there's a lot of down points to it, but overall an enjoyable movie. Um, the Blind Side. Um, <clears throat> it definitely shouldn't be in the Best Picture category. I really don't know why it's there, because I, I really do enjoy this movie. I think it's fantastic. But I even rewatched it just to make sure, but it still does not belong in this category, even though I do think it's very good and Sandra Bullock and all the performances all around are very good. District 9. Now, I'll probably get a lot of crap from this, because I do think it's slightly overrated. Otherwise, it's one of the best movies of 2009. I don't think it should be in the best picture category. I think there are more deserving films, but it's definitely not something I'm upset that it's in this category. It's a very well-made movie. It's definitely one of the better sci-fi movies, um, and it really is. It is a fantastic movie, but I do think there were slightly more deserving movies. So an education was definitely one I was excited to see a lot, and I terribly underrated this movie. It's a lot better than I remember, and I moved it from number, like, 12 or 13 to number 7, my favorite movies of 2009, yeah, and I, I've completely changed my whole top 10 since I uploaded it. Um, next, The Hurt Locker. Uh, the Hurt Locker is my second favorite movie of the year. It is an amazing movie, down to every last speck of it. It is fantastic, completely, completely awesome performance-wise, even the action, like, with the war scenes. Inglourious Bastard is my third favorite movie of 2009. A fantastic film, one of Quentin Tarantino's best. I think it is slightly better than Reservoir Dogs. Don't shoot me. It's my second favorite Tarantino movie. Precious. I really like Precious. It's depressing, but at the same time, it's realistic. A Serious Man. Now, I love the Coen Brothers. Um, little hint. Um, Fargo, Fargo is my 23rd or 22nd favorite movie of all time, and the coolest thing about Fargo is it, it was released on my exact, exact, exact birthday, same day, mon, mar, same day, same month, same year, and if you know the release date, you're probably gonna be like, you're so young, oh my god. Well, that's just another year I can review movies for you. Um, yeah, I terribly underrated this movie, too. It went from, like, number 14 to my number 10 movie of the year. It's just so awesome. It's very weird, obviously. It's that dark and dry humor that um, the Coen brothers are so powerful with. It really is a very, very well-made movie. Up! Oh, you know I love this movie. Come on, my favorite movie of the year. So happy it is in this category. Up in the Air, my fourth favorite film of 2009. Obviously, I'm happy with this movie being here. I knew it was going to be a year, but it kind of fell out of the mantle for the front runner for Best Picture. Hope everybody has an awesome night. Um, movies for the win.